the most people we've ever had in here before the show started. Yeah. Right. Welcome to day 26 of the Here to Hear Comedy Tour. 26 is uh, your favorite number, you said, Justin. Yep. Nice. I see a guy wearing a... How you doing? Nice OVO shirt. I like it. Got the owl, the Drake OVO shirt. Toronto, represent. We're here on the uh, University of Akron campus. Beautiful fall day. But we're here for a show tonight. We're performing on the uh, at the Starbucks tonight. So I'll be drinking an Americano while I perform. Very classy, very sweaty as well. But first, today we're gonna go meet with um, a woman. She's an audiologist, her name is Carrie Spangler. I was reading her biography. We both lost our hearing at the age of four, so we have that in common. I just went into comedy and she actually helped people. So that's the main difference between us. But I'm excited to go talk to her, so let's get to it. So what's like a main piece of advice that you've learned that you would give to high schoolers um, in dealing with hearing loss and advocating for themselves? One of the main things is self-disclosure. Just like telling, tell, being, getting comfortable enough to be like, I have a hearing loss, this is what I need to do. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of kids, I think, um, especially when they go to college, they think, I'm going to hide it, I'm just going to try to, you know, and to be comfortable with this is part of who I am, mm -hmm. and this is, you know, it doesn't have to necessarily define me, but it's just part of, one part of who I am. I think that was definitely the toughest, it took me years to do that. I would have job interviews or classroom settings where I would just not let anybody know, and I would just be like, well, guess I'm not going to hear this. And right. Yeah, it took me like, probably like the last five years before right. I was finally like, oh, I can't hear you. It used to just be like, I guess. I guess just, it, it's just <laughs> how it has to be. Yeah. Right? So yeah. I don't know about you, but I know typically when I tell someone, they're just, they have some more questions. Well, how can I help you? Yeah. Um, rather than the other, maybe what they're thinking is like, oh, well, if I tell them, then I'm going to be treated differently. Yeah. Also, anybody who's going to treat you poorly after they learn that information isn't somebody you want to hang out with anyway. So it's kind of a nice way to filter out the bad people exactly. from the get-go. Yeah. 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 And it's a great way to talk about what is important in a friend and what is important in, you know, values. So it's another, like you said, opportunity to talk about some of yeah. Yeah. Thing. Well, thank you so much for meeting. I know. And so good luck, and like tonight is the big. Show. Yeah, yeah, we're performing right like there yeah. at the so, Starbucks. So, yeah, yeah, that's in my rider. It's got to staying. be at a Starbucks every single time. Okay. No, that's, not <laughs> that, that's all we. <laughs> <laughs> Two hours later. So uh, we're back. We're back at the school. We were here earlier when we talked to Carrie, but we went back to the hotel. We had like four or five hours to kill, so we went back. And I gotta tell you. A nap, a nap, so good. You know this tour. Let me take my toothpick out. I got something important to say. This tour is all about destigmatizing hearing loss, but I'm also here to de to destigmatize napping. A lot of people, myself included, I used to be guilty of this. You say, "Oh, you nap," and people are like, "No, they take it as a sign of weakness if you nap." I used to say that. Not anymore. You give me 30 minutes to nap, I'll take that 30 minutes. Feel refreshed ready to dominate. Y'all ready for this? You got a front row seat for me. Whooping Justin's Garcia Vega coming live from 10,000 hours later. Yeah, my self belief is how I choose to get around life. Back. And if you stay down, this is what it sounds like. Stay down where my homies got an awesome Woo! team. Studio is looking like we bought a fog machine. Got a land of feeling like we in the middle. <laughs> so glad we got that. Game veterans only getting better. It's nothing I remember. Came here to kick ass and chew bubble gum. And I'm all out of bubble gum. I was born with superpower, only he could bring. I could read through people, I could see through things. Game. What'd you say? Oh, thank you. Wow, so sportsmanlike. Well, we're finished playing pool. Um, time, time to go do some comedy. But I should let the people know what just happened. I derive no pleasure from this, Justin. It just it won't be satisfying as a viewer if you don't know. Like, oh, you watch? I just watched pool. What happened? Uh, I won three games to none. But it doesn't matter. I don't care. <laughs> You did that on purpose. You wanted me to feel good. This is the most people we've ever had in here before the show started. Yeah. Right. 
the kind of pull you have when you get kicked out in the second round of America's Got Talent. <laughs> you can hear me? I can hear you through my hearing aid. Amazing. Yeah. This is better than listening to stories on my Woo. phone. Thank you. I just got to remember to mute it when I go to the bathroom. The DJ Demers. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I wear hearing aids. Uh, they're amazing. Right now, there are two people in the audience who are connected to me through this microphone who wear hearing aids. So they can hear me right into their ears right now through this thing. And it's pretty crazy. I won't say who it is, but uh, I have to make sure I turn it off after the show when I go to the bathroom. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't want to get too intimate with those people. Hey, you're on the piano. Can you give me a couple keys over there? Yeah, just sitting there. Hey, maybe after Big Punchline, you could sprinkle in a little something, add some flavor. See me? That's what I'm talking about right there. Thank you very much. You hear a big laugh? Or maybe if a joke doesn't go well, that's when you can let me know by doing a little, whatever you want. Feel free to do it at your discretion. Give it up for Justin, everybody. This guy's the man. And we just played pool in your uh, pool hall. But yeah, I beat Justin three games to none. I just wanted to put that on the video. Make sure you include that in the video, Justin, that I beat you three games to none. Thank you for that. Put me in a good mood before the show. Do you know any Adele on the piano? No Adele? Charlie Brown? Let's hear some Charlie Brown. Yeah, do it. Come on. Nice little interlude. Yeah, keep it going for her, everybody. We're going to get some Charlie Brown. going to be the rest of the show, by the way, guys. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much. That was nice. Feels lighter. Ooh. That was so nice. Thank you. Thank you for that. What made you want to get into comedy? I don't know. I've just always loved comedy, and uh, I just knew I wanted to do it. I get that question. I never have a good answer for it. I just know I wanted to do it, and I can't imagine doing anything else. So the first time I got up and did like an open mic, like an amateur night, the first laugh I got, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this forever. And I'm just lucky enough that I get to do it now. So uh, when I was in like seventh grade, I saw a Jerry Seinfeld comedy special and I just loved it. And I was like, how do I do that? So I went to school, I got a business degree, uh, hated it, <laughs> did a couple business jobs, hated them. So this is it now. I'm not good at anything else. So this goes off the rails, kind of screwed. Thank you so much, come say hello. Have you ever considered other types of hearing aids? Uh, yeah, I had different types like my whole life, yeah. but uh, I've been wearing Phonak for like five years now. Do you have hearing aids? No, my mom has one in her left ear and she actually has a through in the side of her head. Oh, like the cochlear implant? And, yeah, and it That's attaches cool. to her head and she like doesn't have this on the side of her ear because I use it in surgery. she hear well with it? Uh, she chooses not to wear it, uh. but when she does wear it, but sometimes like it messes with her ear, like the wind and stuff. So that she can't the wind hear is so tough. Yeah, yeah so she's the like, wind's well, I just won't hear out of my left ear. So. <laughs> but she got, she's okay on the right? Yeah. Oh, she yeah. Actually Let's do our outro with Rosalinda playing the piano. It's Rosalinda? Or yeah. Do you go by that or Rosie? I go by Lindy, actually. Lindy? My parents wanted to be different, and I lived with my grandma who had the same name as me. Ah, yeah. Lindy. Yeah. Perfect. Well, Rosalinda, a.k.a. Lindy, what are we going to close out the show with? I'll try to play a snippet of Fur Elise, but like... We'll see. That's the end of episode 26, everybody. Thank you to everybody at University of Akron for being so warm and inviting. Thank you to Lindy for playing us out with this beautiful rendition of Fur Elise. We'll see you tomorrow. That was amazing. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Lindy. Thank you for being here. It was so funny. Uh, I was glad. gasping the whole time. Really? <laughs> hey, did you like what you just saw? You should subscribe then. Or you can watch the previous video right down there. Or a random video right down here. Thank you very much.